To the future number what number are we at 27 yay updates boo so a lot of people had some issues with the latest updates that just came out uh, Tuesday as a matter of fact right as we speak I am updating my Apple watch and that seems to have been the um, the one piece of equipment that seems to be the most problematic as far as uh, actually updating goes. I did the iPad, oh, it was last week sometime when the Gold Master came out and that went flawlessly. I did the iPhone um, Wednesday morning. So the, yeah, this morning I did the iPhone. And um, other than some of the things that I'm, I'm going to talk about here tonight. It wasn't that uh, that big a deal. Uh, but for some people, it has been an issue. I know it's been an issue for some people right here in the Mac to the Future Facebook group. And um, we, will, we will talk about this. Uh, but before I do that, just so everybody knows who I am, I'm Guy Searle. I'm with the MTTFGO podcast yeah it's right there and um tonight i think basically what we're going to talk about is mostly what these updates are and what they're going to do for you uh, ios 11 has has a lot going for it now a lot of the stuff that ios 11 is going to do you we really won't be able to see until its counterpart comes out mac os 11 sorry <laughs> mac os 10.13 hey brian how's it going today tonight uh but we're just going to talk about ios 11 so for both the ipad and the iphone one of the really really cool things that that it has is um the control center. The control center in iOS 11 is just leaps and bounds better than what it was before. Um, people who don't use iOS may say, what's the big deal? But it's taken Apple a long time to come out with uh, control, a control center with a UI that that's actually something that people would want to go and use. Um, for the iPad, there is, of course, the uh, the OS 10 kind of dock that it has it, it's it's a step in the right direction uh there's also a uh files app that supposedly lets you uh open and drag stuff between documents but it only kind of works or kind of works well on the ipad i mean there is a files app on the phone but pretty much all you can do with that is open up individual files uh, which in some ways is better because in, what you had to do before, if, if there was a document you wanted to open, number one, you had to know what application made that document. And then you'd have to open the app and assume that the app had the, um, uh, like a link to that document. And yeah, it was, it was, it was a thing and you know, not a whole lot of fun. The files app, kind of takes away from that and uh, people who may be kind of new to what I've been talking about with iOS uh, this is kind of sort of what I was talking about before where you had a finder that wasn't so much app centric as it is with the Mac OS but it's document centric so um, the way I envisioned it was that you would have kind of what they have here with the files app. And then you would click on 
one of the files, but instead of opening, what it would do is give you a, a, a list of the applications that can do something with that file. And then you would pick which app it is that you wanted to use. Well, this doesn't do that, but it is a step in that direction. Whether or not Apple will take it fully in that direction, the future will tell. But that's kind of what I would like to see that as. But it, it may or may not. Um, Maps navigation, which I haven't had a chance to try yet, at least not on the open road, uh, gets lane guidance. So if you've used other navigation style apps, as you come up to the exit or, you know, when, when you have a decision tree where you have to either take an exit or you have to make sure that you're in uh, uh, the far left lane or the far right lane, well, the, the new nav Maps Navigation app is supposed to do that. So it gives you lane guidance, gives you speed limit info, and I'm hoping that they don't take that to the point where some, some navigation apps, I know that I, I ended up going in and turning it off in the Copilot app and the Navigon app. Um, let's say the speed limit is 55 miles an hour, and you're doing, you know, not that I would ever do that, but someone around you is doing... 70 miles an hour. Well, at 70 miles an hour, more than 10 miles over the speed limit, it would start to beep at you and be annoying. And I would always turn, I'm sorry, that person would always turn that off. Uh, hey, Joshua Church from North Carolina. What part of North Carolina, Joshua? We go down there quite a bit, my wife and I. Who, My wife's family is from the, uh, the Dunn-Irwin area, which is right around mile marker 72, 73. Um, she has a, uh, this is completely off track. I'm going completely off the rails. She has a um, 1972 Volkswagen Beetle that she picked up in Lillington, if you know where that is, at uh, East Coast Classic Cars. So, oh, you're from Boone. Okay, I have no idea where that is. Uh, how far is that from, like, uh, Raleigh, or you know one of the one of the larger cities, western part. Okay, yeah, um, we'd spent some time in Greensboro while our kids went to camp uh, near Greensboro. Uh, but getting back, getting back to this other stuff. Yeah, we it is a Mac iOS show. Uh, the the Maps app also gets indoor maps, which is something that Google's been doing for a while. Uh, as long as these indoor areas like malls and airports and things like that have been pre-mapped, 3.5 miles from Raleigh. Okay. Uh, also, <laughs> I love this. You know, and the more I think about this feature, the more I realize that that with as big a deal as they made of it, so few people will probably use it. It's the do not disturb feature, which is meant to kill kind of like messaging and stuff like that while driving. Uh, it's, you know... If, they, if it's worked out to where, you know, you have a controlled account with uh, your teenagers or whatever, and you can force them to use this, that's great. Otherwise, this will be the least used feature by teenagers uh, in the history of everything. Um, not here just yet, but one of the features that I think is really kind of cool is the person-to-person -person Apple Pay. So... Um, I walk up to Joshua and I owe Joshua $20 because he got me some barbecue at this like really great place and just kind of handed it off to me as my wife and I are, are zooming up the highway. Well, instead of, you know, reaching in my wallet and handing them some, some dirty, filthy lucre, some, some actual cash money, uh, 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 who knows where that money has been? Um, I can just use my my phone and flash them $20 right through Apple pay in theory, in theory. We'll see how that works. Uh, it's also, I also think that this is an, this is an app with uh, the most potential, most potential to be thoroughly abused. Um, this is the kind of application or the, the kind of thing that will make you, seriously consider having a very strong password on your phone and making sure that 
that nobody else knows what it is because if they can just they could just sit there all day long and send money to themselves. Now, of course, they would, they'd get busted for it, but, you know, yeah, it's just not good. Um, there are new photo and video formats in both uh, the upcoming Mac OS and in iOS, and that is H-E-I-F for pictures and H-V, H-E, H-E-V-C for video. And this is for the, the higher resolution cameras and 4K video that you'll be able to shoot with the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10. Now, if you have a 6, 6S or a 7, you know, the new formats, is it's kind of like, okay, well, great. So um, stuff that I'm getting from iTunes isn't going to take up as much room. But it's not really going to help you much because your camera does isn't as good as the one that's in the 8 or the 10. And it's certainly not good enough to shoot 4K video. Now, I don't know anyone who has shot 4K video on an 8, especially not on a 10. So time will tell whether or not those are any good. Uh, Frank Petri says he's usually playing with Apple Music when, when he drives. I'm usually listening, <laughs> believe it or not, shocker, I'm listening to podcasts as, as usually as I'm driving. Though when I run out, um, yeah, I'll, I'll switch over to Apple Music as well. As a matter of fact, um, back in June when I took my son Peter and his friend down to Florida, on the way back from Florida, they listened to episode after episode after episode of the Tobolowski Files. Uh, if you don't know, this is a podcast done by uh, actor, writer, uh, producer, director, Stephen Tobolowsky. And if you don't know who Stephen Tobolowsky is, go look him up on IMDb. He's got the record for, I think, like the fifth or sixth most uh, parts in movies and television. I mean, this guy's done everything and he's still working and really, really a super nice guy. Uh, moving on to the messaging app. It has its own, it kind of has its own doc. And the, the cool thing about this, you know, you, you bring up the messaging app and you've typed in some stuff, you're getting ready to send it and you want to do some stuff with it. Or you want to play a game with someone that you're connected with through the messaging app. Well, when you put your finger on the bottom part of the phone and start moving it back and forth, the doc grows you know, gets a little bit bigger in size so that you can actually see what the icons in there and you can scroll through it for all the, all the different types of games and, and things like that you have. So, um, that's, that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, you can also, um, see games that you're playing with others, as I said, through the messaging app, stickers, uh, music, and much, much more. Also, there's new effects like echo, which basically when they, when they open up, the uh, the message when they go into the messaging app and they see your message it suddenly like flashes all over the screen over and over and over again and then there's spotlight that that puts like a, a big white circle and blacks out everything else around it so your message is like is like spotlighted ooh clever um now for the more paranoid of us uh, yeah iMessage sorry uh for the more paranoid of us there is also an emergency mode that will lock out touch ID and face ID so that it can't be used, but still allows for someone to see your medical information, which could be important, or to call 911. So, you know, if you're one of the people that are freaked out thinking, oh, all, all they'll have to do is just hold hold the, the phone up to my face and, and it'll be unlocked. Okay, well, you know, with Touch ID, if they grabbed your hand and forced you to put your thumb or, or some, some other finger on it, that would have done the same thing. However, uh, if, it, if it's really that big of a deal, all you have to do is make it so that coming out of a locked state, you have to use your six-digit password. And, you know, all right, it'll take an extra three seconds, three seconds to unlock your phone via... Uh, a six-digit PIN code, 
and just holding it up to your face or, or using your thumb on Touch ID. But if, it, if it's really that big of a concern to you, then just use a freaking pin code. It's not that big a deal. Um, this is kind of cool. Wi-Fi password share. So let's say that, you know, you're in your house and you've got a Wi-Fi network and, and being the, the smart individual that you are, you have this ridiculously long password that of course you don't have to think about because it's, it's baked into your computer and it's baked into your phone. So as soon as they start up, they see the network, they connect, not a problem. But then you have other people come over. They want to use your Wi-Fi network. You know, they, they want to check Facebook. They want to go to Instagram. They, they want to see what the latest outrage is on CNN. So how do they do that? They have to go to your, your Wi-Fi network when you don't want to really give them your, your password. You know, I mean, they just, they don't need to know what the password is to your network. Well, with Wi-Fi password share, you can share your password without actually showing that password with another iOS device. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you can also save your favorite animated GIFs. Your favorite animated GIFs. Okay. Um, something that people, I guess some people, have been asking for for a while iOS 11 will finally, 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 using the Photos app, scan QR codes if you find that important. Uh, something that is kind of cool, you will you ha also have now document scanning, and it's got, I think it has some built-in OCR, so you'll be able to search based on some of the things that you see in that document. So the, the Notes app is becoming much, much more like Evernote than uh, what it was like before. Um, one really, really cool thing that I've been seeing, and a lot of people were playing with that this morning when I got up, was you can now do super, super easy screenshots and video screen captures in the, uh, in the new control center. So easy. Um, Simon is asking me how, 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 what 5X lock button? I, I don't get it. You'll need to give me some more information there. Um, favorite animated gift. Frank Petri says, favorite animated gifts. Truly an oxymoron. Yes, yes, it is. Um, as far as Siri goes, this now, now I, I haven't listed, and I'm not going to go into every single thing that iOS 11 brings to either the iPad or the iPhone. Uh, just some of the things that I've run across that that I think are kind of cool, and. Um, one of the things, oh, to scan. Uh, I believe all you have to do is, uh, I, I, I think it's built into either the Notes app or the Camera app. Um, I haven't really played with it yet. I mean, this some of this stuff I've just read about online, and I do need to try it. But I, I certainly like the idea of it. Um, as far as Siri goes, you can now, let, let's say you activate Siri and... Uh, you want to find out about all the movies that are playing at 5 p.m. But instead, you accidentally say 6 p.m. Well, in the past, what you'd have to do is start Siri again and, and give her the new message and, and wait for all that to happen. Well, now you can actually edit, physically edit the text of what it was you were asking Siri, whether you typed it in or whether you spoke it, and... Siri will accept the new message and come back with the probably more better results than what it was that you were looking for before. So, um, I think that's gonna about do it for uh, the iOS update. Uh, if there's anything in the iOS update that you would like me to talk about, on a, um, you know, once I get a chance to actually try some of this other stuff. I mean, I just downloaded the thing into my phone today, this morning. Uh, let me know what it is through through the Mac to the Future Facebook page, and uh, we can talk about it right here. So, you know, all the different ways that you can get a hold of me, and I'll go over that at the end of the show. 
and we can talk about it there. <clears throat> boy, oh boy. Hmm. So everybody, hold on to yourselves. And um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we'll be right back with a few other things. We're going to talk about the watch OS. We're going to talk about the Apple TV OS. We're going to talk about the Safari update. Bunch more stuff to talk about in the show. So everybody, hold on. I'll be right back. This is Private Eye, Mac and Tosh, and I'm here to tell you about a book written about me and my search for the Maltese Cube. Yes, it's a fine book. I think you should get it. Quiet, you. It combines technology, Mac trivia, action, murder, suspense. Oh, just tell them where to get it. I'll get to that. Romance, film noir detective fiction. I can't stand it anymore. It's called The Maltese Cube, and it was written by my Mac writer and podcaster Guy Searle. Find it on Amazon. It's only $2.99 and coming soon to the Apple's iBook store. Don't forget, it's The Maltese Cube and so inexpensive. You know you're not in it, right? I mean, the next one, right? Sure thing, Louis. You know, this could be the start of a beautiful friendship. Get the Maltese Cube on Amazon and soon in the iBook store. Uh, it's still not... One thing that, that makes me crazy about um, j the Just Broadcaster app is it's not always consistent. You know, I've, I've got these windows set up, or at least I think I've got them set up, to where... They'll um, give do do like a, a two to three second fade fade in fade out in between the windows and it doesn't always work. And I mean, otherwise, this is such such an easy to use and great app that uh, that I really really just wish it would it would be a little more consistent. Anyway. Um, Oh, you know what I haven't done? I haven't done this. There we go. Okay, make sure that we get all the plugs in that we possibly can. All right, first thing we're going to talk about here. Now, I am currently doing the Watch OS update. So a lot of this stuff, again, I haven't done. Um, my buddy at work who actually sold me the Series 2 that I have, uh, was showing me some of this. Oh, stop it. It heard me say her voice, and, and it, it kicked in. So uh, he was showing me some of this stuff today. Uh, actually, before we start here, let's see. Uh, Joshua Church is talking about how to, how to do a, uh, I guess, either a the code uh, document scan or QR code. It gives you a drop down to act on the link. Okay. I, so I guess Josh has tried that. That seems pretty cool. Um, Frank Petri downloaded iOS 11 to his iPad mini first. Uh, he wanted to know whether or not it would work for the uh, iPhone. And, you know, I kind of did the same thing, Frank. I downloaded it on my iPad pro first and then you know, I mean, I, and I do use my iPad Pro every single day, but it's, I don't have the same connection to it and I don't use it nearly as much as I use my iPhone. So I was kind of the same way. Uh, I made sure before I put iOS 11 on my phone, I wanted to make sure it was going to work properly. And uh, so I had the gold master on the iPad and yeah, it was fine. It worked great. Uh, but as far as the watch OS goes, there's now, you know, because right now when, when you want to look at all the apps that you have on your watch, you, you hit the crown and then the, the little display shows up with like this great big huge circle of all these little itty bitty tiny apps. And you, you know, when you've got ham fingers like, like I do, you can't really hit them and yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Well, now for people like that who think that that's all a pain in the ass there is a list view for the apps so you can get them in a nice alphabetical alphabeticalized list and do it that way 
And apparently there is an app dock that you use the crown to scroll through for some of these apps as well. There's also <laughs> Pixar watch faces because that's so important. Uh, there's more activity alerts to be nagged about. So uh, if you're obsessed with, you know, filling the rings in, in all your various activities, uh, there's a few more alerts that they're putting in so that they can bug you about that as well. And a flashlight app. So apparently your watch will light up and how much it'll light up to actually guide you through the dark. I have no idea. I know that the phone is real super bright, but that's a much bigger screen than the, uh, the watch. I don't really know how useful that's going to be. Apple TVS TV OS was updated and it looks to be mostly bug fixes. Now, this update for the Apple TV is not for the 4K Apple TV that's coming out. Uh, I imagine that there will be a, a much bigger update for when the Apple TV 4K comes out, and which, again, I'm, I'm not going to bother to get because I don't have a 4K TV. And unless there is some compelling reason or something that's, that really, really makes the Apple TV 4K uh, a huge win as far as a buy goes, I'm, I'm not going to bother. You know, both the TV sets we have in here in the house aren't 4K. Now, there was also an update for Safari recently uh, available through the Mac App Store. It uh, prevents audio from auto-playing on most websites, according to Apple. Users can also configure things like autoplay for, you know, those super annoying friggin' videos that, that just start to play as soon as you go to the website. Content blockers and reader on a per site basis, or you can make settings universal. And I know that the ad agencies are less than pleased with the fact that Apple is uh, going to be blocking their auto tracking from site to site. You know, they, they throw a cookie when you, when you visit a particular site and then that cookie kind of follows you around to see where else you go. It's the reason why you look for socks on Amazon or some other site. And when you go to another page that has advertising, what do you see? You see a bunch of ads for socks because and they know because you were looking for socks. Lately I've been seeing it for microphones, which is something I've been looking at lately. Also for you know, various cars and car sites that I've been going to. Very, very annoying. And I'm looking forward to, yeah, my heart bleeds too, Frank. I'm looking forward to um, Mac OS 10.13, which will prevent, I'm hoping, most of this from still going on. And I know that when they did... When, you know, they kind of built in ad blocking into Safari, and you could whitelist certain sites. And what really pissed me off is a lot of sites went to the extreme of saying, oh, well, you're using an ad blocker, and we depend on the ads on this site to get paid. So uh, unless you whitelist us, you can't see our content. To which I said, you know what? Whatever kind of crap that I came here to read, not that important. I'll go someplace else. And so every single site that I've gone to where they said, you can't view our content unless you whitelist us, is like, mm -mm, I just won't go back. So screw you guys. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about tonight is the updated iTunes. And this was an update that apparently was more about sharing what kind of music you and your friends listen to than any real improvements. Uh, in my opinion, the user interface took a hit by removing the iOS App Store. Uh, so if you were used to updating apps through the store or arranging all the screens on your iOS devices through iTunes, you can't do that anymore. The App Store isn't even in there. The only way you can look at new apps for iOS 
is to do it either through your phone or through um, through an iPad or some other iOS device. And this is this is just not good. Um, I mean, I hated iTunes bloat as much as anybody did. But if you were going to choose something to pull out of iTunes, why would you choose the apps? You know, I mean, they pulled books out, and that was fine. Um, they could have pulled podcasts out and put that in a separate app. That would have been fine. Or if you were, if they were, if they were determined that it had to be applications that they were going to pull out of iTunes on the Mac. Well, then get, give us an app that we can, you know, kind of like with the Mac App Store, that we can browse iOS apps. And, you know, when our phones and, and tablets and everything else are connected, that we can make some of the changes to it that we were doing with iTunes. And that's, that, would have been, that would have been fine. But to just take it away and say, okay, psh, you can't have it anymore. You know, I'm sorry. That's that's just not good, and and I'm I'm not really happy about it. And unfortunately, you know, there's there's really nothing that that we can do about it. Um, before we go, uh, let's read some of the stuff we got here in the site. Uh, Frank Petri says that his heart bleeds. Yes. Uh, Simon says, uh, you know, I don't like this ad. Frank also says whitelisting equals blackmail. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree. Uh, Brian says that he agrees that he skips Forbes from now on for that reason. Screw the ads and autoplaying videos. Yuck. I certainly agree. Uh, another one, uh, I don't think they do it anymore, but they were doing it was business insider. Uh, I mean, I have my own reasons for hating business insider, but that kind of added the, the frosting to the cake. Um, Brian also says apps should be there so that we can lay out iOS devices grid of, of icons. And yeah, I, that's one of the things I certainly did use it for. Plus it also made, you know, I mean, backups real easy. You could see everything that was there. And now it's like, okay, you've taken some of the, some of the content out of iTunes and you're forcing us to do it on the iPad in, instead. So instead of having, you know, one place to go, to arrange all of the content on these devices, you've you've they've taken that away from us. Um, Frank says there needs to be different stores for music, books, apps. Yeah, sure, why not? That's a, that's a way they could go. Podcast should be a separate Mac OS app. Uh, Brian says Business Insider can have an anti Apple troll news. I don't know if it's so much that as I mean, honestly, I don't think Business Insider gives a crap one way or another about Apple. I think most of these sites that aren't, I, I hate to say it, uh, fanboy sites. And I say that with knowing that the other podcast that I do is at my <laughs> you know, I mean, my Mac.com is a fair site. You know, the, the reviews that you get uh, at my Mac.com aren't going to be cheerleader ads where, you know, uh, somebody who wants to push speakers is like, okay, well, you, know, you can keep those speakers if you give us a good review. No, we don't do that at MyMac.com. If they're crappy speakers, crappy headphones, crappy application, crappy whatever, well, at MyMac.com, we'll tell you that it's crap. That's just how they roll. Now, the MyMac.com podcast, <laughs> with, Gaz, with Gaz and me, that's – that's a whole different. That's a whole different thing. We have we have a really really good time with that show. Um, Frank says thank E World for merchandising. Uh, funny story there. If you ever get a chance to talk to Tim Robertson, who is the uh, owner of MyMac.com and uh, also the creator of the MyMac.com podcast, as well as Tech Fan and and so so many so much other content. Uh, ask him sometime about eWorld. He almost ended up with eWorld, the, the name eWorld.com from Apple. Uh, but at the last minute, I guess they backed out. Okay. Um, 
I think that is going to do it for the evening. Uh, we've got currently we have six people here. Thank you all so very very much. I really do appreciate. I mean, it really makes it easier and certainly much more enjoyable when I see the comments and I can look and I can see that there's a bunch of people here, you know, kind of joining me as, as I'm doing this show. So thank you all so very, very much. Sometimes things like that can come off as kind of insincere, but I, I really and truly do mean it. I'm greatly appreciative, appreciative. I can't even talk tonight. I'm greatly appreciative of the fact that you have taken the time to come and watch me do this, to do this live cast. I don't know if it's because it, it almost ends up being a disaster each week or, or if you actually really think that I'm good and entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, if you would like to get a hold of me, uh, guy at mttfgo.com, Mac Parrot on the Twitters. We have a Skype number that none of you are calling, but if you get a chance, give it a call, 703 436 9501. If you are outside of the United States, you may have to dial a one or a plus one, 703 436 9501. Um, chances are it won't be a free call if you're outside the United States, and I'm sorry about that. But I think that's going to do it for the evening. I know I keep saying that, and then I just keep rambling on. Uh, thank you, Frank. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Brian. And thank you to everybody that has joined me here this evening on the Mac to the Future Go live cast, and we will see you next week. And you're supposed to play. Facebook to finish with the last of the comment, not comments, the scrolly part at the very end. Yeah.